Oh geez, uniforms. <laughs> it was plaid. I went to a very Irish Catholic school on the south side and we wore Kelly Green uniforms. And you celebrated St. Patrick's Day whether you were Irish or not. Dress slacks and a shirt with a tie. And the, the shirts had to be white or blue. It's funny because I worked for IBM and the shirts had to be white or blue. There were only two types of people in the world, Catholics and publics. I started fights, I was a bully, I picked on every girl that I didn't like. Then when I went to Catholic school and the songs came on, it, it just made, I felt, okay, I could be a good girl now. I was afraid of the big crucifix in that place. I ran out of school. I ran home the first couple of days. They had to drag me back. It was, it was this big, gruesome crucifix. You know, what can I say? You know, it scared me. The sisters um, that taught me were very strict, absolutely. If you misbehaved in class, she would warn you. And then if you did it again, she'd bring you in front of the class and she'd have you hold out your knuckles and she would hit you over the knuckles with her brass ruler. Tony, Peter, Lewis, out here right now, and you know, they march us into Harlem like, uh-oh. Because in those days, sister was right. When I grew up, uh, the Catholic school system in Chicago was the third largest school system in America. We had three classrooms of at least 70 to 75 children. I don't know how these young women, or even the middle-aged or older women, kept us all intact other than for the strictness. The biggest class would be like 26 or 29, they're not that big. So you get a chance to really like interact with the teacher, the teacher gets to help you. You'd get a little brown envelope and they'd send it home with you and you'd put, your mom and dad would put two dollars in it and you'd go back to school and you'd give it to the sister and your tuition was paid. Most of us were poor, most of us came from working class families and uh, could never afford kind of the quality of education we got if it wasn't for the, the uh, self-giving of these women. We don't have the teaching population of the good sisters who gave their lives to teach us. I became an altar boy when it was still in Latin. Nemo gratis mendax and homo humus fama fumus finis genus. Those are not jokes, they're, they're uh, Latin phrases. You know, you got some special privileges. You know, that was a neat thing about it. You, know, you got to get out of school for funerals. One of the best parts I liked was holding up uh, the cross because you were right there again, front and center. And coming down the aisles, everybody turned around and looking at you. and then you would start the day off with a prayer, bell would ring, you go to homeroom, and then you would have another prayer. At the end of the day, you would have another prayer, and that, and that was it. Taking the L, uh, the, the subway and the L uh, to school every day. One of the joys of a Quigley student was to sit next to a complete stranger and start pulling out books, and you'd, you'd pull out the French book, and then you'd pull out the Latin book, and then you'd pull out the Greek book. I wanted to follow my father's footsteps and work at Ford, Ford Motor Company where they make cars. Sister Virginia, she said, you know what? She says, I see that you love photography. Why don't you go and take pictures yourself? You know, go to Columbia College and that was for me, that was, she gave me the kick on the side of the head that I needed. Uh, because growing up in South Chicago, we were just used to certain things and certain jobs and I never thought about being a photographer, but she put that great idea into my head that I could go to college.